normally we wouldn't bring a car on Top Gear's Speed Week if we couldn't drive it at top speed, but we will make an exception for this, the McMurtry Spearling, an electric car that might change the way you do your track days. Now, obviously, you haven't heard of McMurtry and you haven't seen this rather natty Peregrine Falcon logo before, but if you are going to have the fastest bird in the world on the back of your car, then it better be pretty fast. And it is. It better be pretty aerodynamic as well, and that that's what the McMurtry is really all about. I mean, look at it, it's kind of this miniature Batmobile mixed with a bit of LMP2 car, except, look, no huge rear wing on the back. You can't have a great big rear wing if you're an electric car, because that's generating drag and it's killing your precious range. So this is not just about straight line performance, it's a total reinvention of how an electric car generates downforce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I don't know about you, but I do love a car with such crazy aerodynamics that you don't just look at it, you can also look kind of through it. And the McMurtry's got loads of that. As the air is kind of forced out of these vents at the front, it's then sucked into these channels down the side of the car, under the flying buttresses, and then out via the rear suspension. And next to that are two more exits. And that's the key to this car's party trick, because these well, these are exhaust pipes, and why would an electric car have those? Well, at the other end of these tubes are two electric fans buried somewhere deep in there. And when they're running at full pelt, this car will generate half a tonne of downforce. Now, normally you'd be depending on a big wing about here to make that kind of aero, but that only generates downforce when the car's moving at top speed. The fans, they work at any speed, so you can have your half a tonne of downforce, but while you're parking, Okay, so I think that's enough aerodynamic theory for now. We should deal with some cold, hard numbers. And for that, I've been joined by an expert, David Turton from McMurtry Automotive. Now, before we get started, you need to tell the ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, where you actually used to work. So I spent half of my career working as a mechanical engineer for both Williams and Mercedes F1. Right, so if you've worked at Mercedes F1, you know a lot about making very, very fast track cars. So can you tell me a bit about the philosophy behind this strange mini Batmobile we've got? So the philosophy about this car is what could the future be of electric motorsport? So to achieve extremely high range and speed in an electric car, you've got to get the weight down and the drag down. So that is basically shrink wrapping the car around the driver. So that's reducing the frontal area in all dimensions, making an extremely slippery body shape, but you still need downforce for lap time. So we, by having a fan-based downforce system, like an inverse hovercraft, we can suck the car to the track, and it's actually a really energy efficient way of getting your downforce. So we consume less power at racing speeds, which means we can have a smaller, lighter battery and go faster and further. Right, so you're already thinking a lot outside the box there, typical Formula One bloke. So I can understand that it's small. I understand why you're punching a small hole in the air, but just in terms of like conventional electric car thinking, we're still powered by a lithium ion battery, are we? Yeah, so we have a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack, which is amazing to fit in a car of this size. Yeah, that's the same size as like a Volkswagen ID3 kind of battery, but in something that looks like a little toy race car. That's right. And the battery is actually in the side pods and underneath the driver's leg. So the kind of philosophy is take the driver, put the safety structures around them, the wheels and the motors, and the remaining space is to, to fill with batteries uh, in between the wheels to you know, create a super low drag um, overall concept. Yes, yeah, so you've got this incredible silhouette and then obviously you need to power it. So have you gone for motors at all four corners? So this is a rear wheel drive, twin motor rear wheel drive. Right. Um, and this car is around about a thousand horsepower and you might think, how can you get a thousand horsepower through two wheels at the back? But the secret is the fan system. So like you said, we're getting full downforce from zero speed. So we've got full grip to deploy a thousand horsepower. And presumably if you've got just modes at the rear wheels, does that mean you can do clever things with torque vectoring and with power slide drift modes and things? Yeah, there's a few tricks you can play with that and a little bit of regenerative braking as well. But I guess the nice thing from the driver's point of view, you've got the central driving position and you've got uh, unadulterated front wheels which are just, just doing the steering and the braking. So it's mm. getting back to a, a nice pure driving experience. So you're saying about a pure driving experience, but people always think of EVs about pure speed. So in terms of getting this thing off the line, how fast are we actually talking? So, 0 to 186 miles an hour in under 9 seconds, and it'll go on to way over 200 miles an hour. 
It was only released two months ago at the Festival of Speed. And each week we're testing the car, improving it, making it faster and lighter. So over the next year we're going to reveal its true performance. So watch this space to see how fast it can really go. All right, so a thousand horsepower, this incredible aero. Have you actually done any kind of simulations of how fast you could lap, say, Silverstone or Come on, the Nürburgring. Yeah, so this car's home is on Grand Prix grade tracks, you know, wide open tracks that you're used to watching combustion motorsport on. Um, we have done a lot of simulation, we're very excited about how fast it can be, but we're not going to reveal it just yet. Ah, bloody <laughs> Formula One sports sports. Now, I should say, so the car's made completely out of carbon fibre, and of course it isn't road legal, this is just a prototype for now. I'm assuming there's not a lot of luxury inside, but can I have a poke around in the interior? Absolutely, let's have a look. Okay, so backside down. <laughs> right, wasn't the most graceful way of getting in, but worth it. I immediately feel like I'm basically lying down midway through a backflip. So this is the batteries are under my feet, I take it, and that's why I'm laid right down in the car. Yep, so you've got a F1 or Le Mans style driving position, which is um, really good to get the overall height of the car down. It's a very safe position for you to be in and it means that we basically fit batteries in all the remaining space that isn't driver, wheels or motor. So the batteries are in the side pod and underneath the driver's legs. Yeah, I've got to say, this is one of the coolest views out I've ever seen. I mean, all the fighter pilot or kind of submarine cliches apply here. You can just see the tops of the wings and then nothing in front help you spot the apex. Now I can't help noticing there's nowhere for my phone, there's nowhere for a cup, and there's certainly nowhere for a passenger either beside or behind me. So. Obviously this is a single seater. Are there any plans one day to kind of take what you've learned from this and put it in a road car and a road car you could potentially bring a mate along in to blow their mind? So we're really excited about the single seater electric car concept. Right. So we absolutely wish to do road cars in, in the long-term future. Um, for us, a really exciting thing about taking this on the road is imagine every single road you drive on, you can actually take the racing line because your car is so narrow. <laughs> Almost like a motorbike. It's kind of like a four-wheel. You've got more it's, space to play with. It's like a, a safe four-wheel motorbike. There we go. There's, there's a USP. And, and overtaking as well. You can nip out and make gaps that you wouldn't normally be able to make. So as a road car, the concept is quite exciting. Uh, but for us, the focus is on delivering something really exciting, grab some, um, some records mm. uh, and, and do a single make race series to get people excited that a, a single seat car is, is what they need to commute. Yeah, I think 20 or 30 of these charging into a really high downforce section, Maggots Beckett's or something at Silverstone would be pretty mind-blowing. Um, I'm really taken with what you said about the noise. I've never been in an electric car before that I can show off and rev. So, um, yeah, can we turn the fan on, please? Sure, we'll, we'll just do that now. Now, something I should have told you about this car is that though the manufacturer is called McMurtry, named after the Irish inventor Sir David McMurtry, this car is actually named the Spearling, and that's Irish for thunderstorm. And here's why. Of course, the McMurtry is just a prototype for now. You are not going to be seeing this on the roads next year, getting in the way of Nissan Leaf drivers at the local charging station. Bit of a pity, really. But if this thing can't get you excited about the future of electric cars and fast electric cars, then I'm not sure what will. I mean, you could be looking here, not just at the future of how you might do a track day one day, but the future of the hypercar itself.